Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new webinar that we've set up for you. This time, we're talking about Catalyst Center ITSM integration with ServiceNow. Uh, I have a special guest today. Uh, my name is Adrian Liesu, by the way. I'm a developer advocate for pretty much everything enterprise networking at Cisco. And one of the products that I cover together with Gabi is what used to be called Cisco DNA Center. Now uh, the product is going through a rebranding effort. We're going to call it Catalyst Center going forward, but I'll let Gabby talk a bit more about this. Uh, welcome everyone. Super excited to, to be on this webinar. Gabby, take it away um, and let's get it going. Thank you, Adrian. Uh, welcome everybody. Next uh, 60 minutes, I'll try to introduce you. It will be an overview of the Catalyst Center ITS and integration service now. As you are going to see through the presentation, there are two options for this integration. One is with the Cisco DNA app, and the other one is not using the Cisco DNA app. Um, there are a lot of details uh, that um, uh, I will go over uh, pretty quickly. I encourage uh, at the end of the uh, webinar, you are going to have access to a number of different resources. There, are, I have two Cisco Live presentations that go in great details uh, in about everything that you are going to see today. I will have also demos. Uh, we are going to look at uh, creating new incidents, change requests, uh, the inventory that we synchronize from Carly Center uh, with ServiceNow, to ServiceNow. As Adrian mentioned, uh, we are in the process of rebranding uh, Cisco DNA Center uh, with Carly Center. This is the new name of the Cisco DNA Center platform. Uh, for the presentation you are going to see, I'm going to use uh, hopefully, uh, a little bit more Catalyst Center, less Cisco DNA Center. I have been using Cisco DNA Center for the past four years. Uh, I am the uh, Catalyst Center uh, TME for uh, Cisco DNA Center, for Catalyst Center APIs and uh, integrations. Uh, we will start quickly through an overview of uh, the Catalyst Center platform and the integration with ITSM. Uh, some uh, of the use cases that you are going to see throughout the presentation. Uh, we are going to look at the both options. One, using the Cisco DNA app, that is obviously the recommendation. You are going to see it is very feature rich, has a lot of capabilities uh, built in, but also for those of you that may not be able to use the Cisco DNA app, uh, we are going to look at the options of how to build the integration, what are the workflows, uh, what are the uh, what can you take advantage of from a bundle perspective from Catalyst Center? Uh, we will end with uh, custom workflows. How do you uh, how do we enable you as developers to innovate on top of this integration with or without the app, of course, and uh, the resources? Where can you find more information uh, that I'm going to share today? So let's get started. Uh, I know this slide, it's extremely busy. The, the focus for this slide is to give you the entire story of the Catalyst Center platform. Uh, the Catalyst Center platform exposes features and capabilities, workflow automations that are available from the UI to be consumed via APIs. And uh, northbound from the Cisco DNA Center platform, we have the ability, obviously, to consume this information through reports. We have APIs. Uh, to trigger, execute, and uh, retrieve the file with the report. Uh, REST APIs, you are going to see them uh, being used throughout uh, the presentation today. Uh, the integration with ServiceNow obviously is built using REST APIs. And event notifications, that will be part of the presentation as well. We are going to send event notifications for issues to ServiceNow to create incidents or uh, to alert uh, us as network engineers, my background, I'm a network engineer for 25 years. Um, it will alert us about um, issues that are important for us. On the left-hand side, you can see here developer tools. Maybe next or one of the future presentations, we are going to look over what are the options, what do we have built in to enable developers, enable network engineers to build uh, automation infrastructure, uh, uh, workflows, infrastructure as code use cases, or dashboards, uh, build managed services on top of uh, Cisco uh, Catalyst Center. What we are going to focus obviously on the right-hand side is integrations, and we are going to spend all the time on the service line integration. Uh, this integration is ready for you out of the box uh, to be consumed. 
the configuration of the integration is pretty simple, uh, doesn't require a lot of time, but as soon as you uh, configure the integration, you are uh, able to synchronize the inventory that is managed by Catalyst Center or consume event notifications uh, or um, the change request, the closed loop uh, workflow for change requests. You are going to see all of this uh, demoed today. So, of course, ServiceNow as a platform has a lot of different capabilities and features, and we are going to focus from the Catalyst Center integration perspective only to some of the ITSM capabilities. We are going to create incidents in ServiceNow. We are going to create problems. Uh, if that is the desired workflow for you, uh, we are going to create a change request in ServiceNow when, uh, for example, we are making a change from a configuration perspective. Uh, for example, I want to make a change from a fabric perspective or group-based policy or a software upgrade, like what you are going to see in the demo today. And uh, we are going to synchronize the inventory of uh, Catalyst Center managed devices with the CMDB uh, table in service now. So why? what is the value? Why? Catalyst Center and ServiceNow integration. Why I encourage you to really look at this integration and uh, see the, the opportunities for you to take advantage of what we already built if you are deciding to use the Cisco DNA app. It's first, it's increased efficiencies. As soon as we are identifying a network issue from uh, Catalyst Center, we are going to create an incident in ServiceNow. Uh, change request integration. We are going to continue with certain processes, with specific processes changes uh, in the Catalyst Center only if approved by the change control manager in ServiceNow. Uh, we are always going to have updated inventory of all the network devices managed by Catalyst Center in the CMDB table in ServiceNow. You can go back a year ago, you can go back across multiple Catalyst Center in, uh, uh, clusters and identify. Uh, when was the device added to the infrastructure uh, to be managed by DNA Center? Uh, you can identify information regarding the devices that um, maybe are the serial number, uh, the uh, software versions, uh, information that is available uh, for uh, the network operations teams. So as I mentioned, there are two options from an integration perspective. The first one is the one that um, I highly encourage you to start with first using the Cisco DNA app. And uh, the reason why I'm encouraging you to start with this option is because we've done a lot of the development. You are going to see that without the Cisco DNA app, there are less features uh, available for you. But with the first option, you will take advantage of everything that we built in, while you still can, if you need, uh, customize this integration. And you are going to see custom workflows uh, is going to touch a little bit on that one. You, you can automate a lot of different workflows, network automation workflows from ServiceNow uh, when you're obviously on top of the Cisco DNA app. From an architecture perspective, uh, when we use a Cisco DNA app, uh, of course, we need to configure on Catalyst Center uh, the platform and bundles. I don't have time to go through all the configuration, the Cisco Live presentations include all the details. You are going to receive the link. You are going to find the link of how to access those presentations. And ServiceNow, we need to install the Cisco DNA app. You will need a ServiceNow admin to perform this task to install the Cisco DNA app. The communication from the platform, from Cisco DNA Center, from Catalyst Center to the DNA app is through REST APIs. And uh, the outbound always will go from Catalyst Center to ServiceNow uh, directly without uh, the need for a mid server. You are going to see what the mid server is. There is a bit of a challenge that when ServiceNow will need to reach Catalyst Center, which is on prem, it is in your data center, um, that communication would be very difficult. Uh, ServiceNow has uh, basically a mid-server management instrumentation discovery server that is a Java application running, could run on Linux, could run on Windows. Uh, it will be very likely co-located with where uh, your Cisco DNA Center is and will communicate with ServiceNow. All the REST APIs from ServiceNow to Catalyst Center will be sent through the mid-server. 
I know customers, they may have a handful of MIT servers. I know customers that have 20 plus MIT servers. You do not need a dedicated MIT server only for the integration with Catalyst Center. Uh, you can share one if you have one that is uh, not heavily utilized. Uh, you certainly can share one, but you need to know that a MIT server will always register only with service now, uh, one service now instance. So, for example, if you have multiple service now instances, you have a, a lab one, you have a sandbox, you have a pre production, you have a production, uh, you will need to accommodate different MIT servers uh, because when the MIT server uh, boots up, it will register to your service now instance and only to that service now instance. So, uh, the communication from service now to DNA center will go through a channel uh, from the MIT server. Uh, to service now, that's how the communication, the session is established. So it is from inside your network to service now. Uh, all the REST APIs sent from service now to Catalyst Center will be through this communication channel. is highly secure. It is uh, definitely the recommended version from the uh, recommended option method to communicate with any on prem platforms uh, by service now. It is a very mature solution. Uh, and um, it is basically the only option for ServiceNow to communicate back uh, to uh, any on-prem uh, platforms. So what are the compatibility options? So you have to be aware that what is the Catalyst Center, the Cisco DNA Center software version, in this case is 235, then identify the app version, in this case is 211. So you, you will have a compatibility between Catalyst Center and the Cisco DNA app that is published in the ServiceNow store. On top of that, each of these apps would have a compatibility version uh, with what ServiceNow uh, ba basically versions uh, is supported. So in this case, 211 uh, it supports Utah, Tokyo, and San Diego. Uh, with every new software version of ServiceNow, we are going through a process to certify the app. Uh, that process is started when the new software from ServiceNow is GA. Uh, typically, it takes a couple of weeks, two, three weeks, and uh, the app will be recertified, and you will uh, basically be able to update the app if needed or continue uh, to use it with the new software version from ServiceNow. Also on the store, on the store.servicenow.com, uh, you will have information regarding uh, how to install the app, the configuration of the app, uh, information regarding how to install the mid server, how to configure the mid server. Let's take a look at the mid server installation. It is straightforward. Um, it is not, uh, I have it, I have few mid servers running in my lab. Uh, they are all running on Linux. It's just easier for me. Uh, you can uh, run them on uh, obviously Windows uh, or Docker if you are interested. It is a very straightforward process. It is a ServiceNow virtual machine that you need. Uh, it will be managed from ServiceNow. Uh, actually, Catalyst Center has no, um, basically is not aware that we have a mid server that helps with the communication from ServiceNow uh, to Catalyst uh, Center. Uh, so from that perspective, you really need to follow the process that uh, ServiceNow provides. We have additional information as well on uh, the store.servicenow.com where you can find the Cisco DNA app. So once you have the mid server installed, it is up and validated. Uh, you are going to see that it is ready for you to use. And uh, that information is required because you are going to have to configure the Cisco DNA controller properties. This is your Catalyst Center. In this case, you can see I have two Catalyst Centers uh, integrated with the same ServiceNow instance. Uh, so in this way, for example, you can uh, put the IP address of your uh, DNA Center where you are going to uh, the virtual IP address of your uh, Cisco DNA center, you're going to provide a username, password. In my environment, I have a dedicated account that I created for ServiceNow to be able to log in uh, in uh, my uh, Catalyst Center's clusters, and then the mid server. That is important because without that mid server, ServiceNow would not know how to reach your uh, uh, Catalyst Center cluster. So it, it is pretty straightforward from a configuration perspective. It's not necessarily a lot that is required to just get started with this integration from the ServiceNow perspective. 
So let's take a look. Um, what are the workflows? And um, I have here, I, I have to let you know, I am skipping quite a bit of steps as far as how to configure the Catalyst Center side, the bundles uh, from uh, Catalyst Center platform. I'm going to share with you when I go to the demo uh, where you can find this information, but definitely the Cisco Live presentations include all the details step-by-step -step of how to configure everything. And uh, of course, if you have questions, you can reach out to me or Adrian and we'll, we'll help you as well. So one of the first workflows that I'm going to review today is configuration management database synchronization. We are going to send, based on a schedule, let's say every day, all the inventory that of devices managed by Cisco DNA Center by Catalyst Center to ServiceNow. The Cisco DNA app is required in this case because we are going to have rich information that is coming back from ServiceNow as far as uh, how many devices have been synchronized with ServiceNow, uh, if we had any errors while we uh, complete this uh, synchronization. So we need to configure or and schedule the CMDB sync. Both are important. If you just do the configuration, but without the scheduling, you are not going to basically run the workflow that will do the synchronization. When the CMDB sync is uh, scheduled, or you can run it on demand, it will send all the inventory from DNA Center to ServiceNow. We can go to, and I'll go in a demo in a few minutes in the CMDB table, and we are going to identify, uh, we are going to see all the devices that are managed by Catalyst Center. And then uh, we can absolutely have visibility in the verify in the platform runtime dashboard, uh, how many times the synchronization ran, it was successful, how long time it takes, how many devices have been synchronized. Again, very important. Uh, I have seen uh, at times where um, some of us are configuring uh, the bundle, but without doing this uh, schedule uh, configuration, without enabling this schedule, uh, and uh, basically we will not see devices uh, in the CMDB uh, table in ServiceNow. So once we do this synchronization, uh, the workflow executes. Uh, this is what you are going to see in ServiceNow. You are going to see here, for example, a discovery source that is my uh, Catalyst Center, the Cisco DNA source, which is uh, .45. That is one of my clusters from the lab. And you can see here information regarding devices, obviously the name of device, type of device, IP address, that is the management IP address of the device. Uh, you are going to see location. You are going to see, for example, some devices are not assigned to any locations and that's why the location attribute is empty serial number software version last time in when it was updated uh, some of them have been updated for example last night um, to basically uh, september 18th at uh, 9 pm that is when my schedule um, would, uh, basically that is when the cmdb sync runs in my lab and here is a little bit more detail about uh, for example, in this case, is a switch. It's a 24-port switch, 9300, serial number, the type of device. Um, there is more information. I, I don't have uh, room enough on this screenshot. Uh, you're going to see it in, in the demo. Uh, the physical location, the area, the building, the floor, uh, the address. Uh, and obviously, we have more information regarding the device is reachable software version and the IP address of the DNA center, the cluster that manages this device. Another workflow that I'm going to demo, which is very powerful, is creating issues from issues to incidents. Uh, when DNA center, Catalyst Center identifies we have a network issue, we'll create a new incident in ServiceNow. And this process is automatic. It will happen in a few seconds. You are going to see uh, some incidents that I created as we were starting uh, this uh, webinar. Um, the, again, the Cisco DNA app in this case is required because you are going to see that we have updates in Catalyst Center about the issue, uh, severity changes, or any status changes from uh, ServiceNow. So again, the bundle needs to be configured and enabled. Uh, we are going to subscribe to specific events. So by the by the fact that you enable the bundle, that doesn't mean like in the previous use case that we are going to send, start to send all the uh, issues, events that we have in the event catalog in Catalyst Center to ServiceNow. We have over plus 200 different uh, issues today 
uh, we are not going to send um, event notifications for all of them to ServiceNow. You have to decide on which uh, is basically uh, issues you want to create incidents. And then once we, you are going to have uh, one of the issues uh, triggered from an assurance perspective, we are going to create a new incident in ServiceNow. Uh, we are going to send from ServiceNow incident updates to Catalyst Center. Catalyst Center will receive the incident numbers, uh, status changes, severity changes, and we will have the, uh, vis visibility of all of these changes and uh, information about the incident in the platform runtime dashboard. Again, the MIT server is required because without the MIT server, there is no way for ServiceNow to communicate back to Catalyst Center. So the MIT server is absolutely required for this. Uh, and um, you will need, as I mentioned, it's a very important step. step. Uh, you need to subscribe to specific events that you are interested to uh, trigger uh, to create in, uh, incidents in uh, Catalyst in ServiceNow. So here is a quick um, overview from a runtime dashboard. You can see here, for example, uh, we have uh, some uh, incidents, uh, some issues, I'm sorry, for interface connecting network devices is down. And uh, the one of the incidents that uh, was created, uh, we have a short description of the incident. Uh, the, uh, Catalyst, uh, the Cisco DNA tab is installed, is created when we install the Cisco DNA app. Uh, this tab will give you more information regarding the uh, Cisco DNA Center cluster. You are going to see in the demo, there is a lot more information available when we create uh, these incidents in ServiceNow. The last uh, workflow before we are actually going to do uh, some demos, we are going to look at uh, the platforms, uh, is the software image management uh, closed loop. So every time when I'm going to trigger a software upgrade, and that is either for a software image distribution or activation, I am going to create a change request in ServiceNow. And again, we need to bundle, configure the bundle. Um, recommendation would be to create us to schedule a maintenance before we do a software uh, upgrade. And uh, then we need to schedule the image upgrade. Mm -hmm. uh, that will create a change request in ServiceNow. When change request is approved, it will be communicated back to Carly Center and only uh, if approved and approved before the scheduled time for the change for the software uh, image distribution activation, only if approved before that time, uh, Carly Center will continue uh, the process, the task at the time that is scheduled. So let's say um, if I'm scheduling, this is how I uh, use it in my lab. I'm scheduled for Saturday morning, uh, some software upgrades. Um, of course, because I have the integration configured, those would create a change request in ServiceNow. I'm the change request manager. I go there, I approve them. Uh, the communication is sent today from ServiceNow to Catalyst Center that these changes are approved. And then Catalyst Center will continue the process to distribute the software and activate the software, let's say, Saturday morning. So uh, the fact that you approve the change request today doesn't mean that DNA Center, Catalyst Center, will continue the process at a time that is approved. Again, the MIS server is required. There is quite a bit of information that will be sent from ServiceNow back uh, to Catalyst Center. Uh, if the MIS server is not operational or you don't have one, that communication, the approval will never be sent from the ServiceNow to Catalyst Center. And Catalyst Center will assume that the change was not approved and will not continue with that process. And uh, here is a quick view I uh, just uh, created now. Uh, today, a change request uh, for a software image distribution uh, that will start September 22nd in a few days. Uh, and it is for a device, uh, LOCN. And uh, this switch um, we can see here from a change request perspective. This was the change request created by Catalyst Center. Uh, it is obviously an automated process. It includes the DNA Center IP address that manages the device. And you have here in the Cisco DNA tab um, information regarding the current image uh, running on the device and the golden image, the image that the device will be upgraded to. to. Uh, if I'm the change control manager in this case, I would ask more information. Why do we need a software upgrade? 
uh, what is the backup plan, uh, what are maybe do the all the other tasks that we need before um, a Cisco um, device software upgrade, and then maybe I would approve it. So very quickly, the three workloads, uh, CMDB sync, incident management, and change management. Those are going to be from a software perspective for change management. Those are going to be the ones that I'm going to do demos today. Uh, but we have additional change management uh, uh, integrations for group-based policy changes or fabric. Uh, if I'm doing, if I need to uh, perform any uh, fabric configurations, uh, changing a fabric, uh, creating a new fabric, those would create a new uh, change request in uh, service now. There are a couple of other workloads that I do not have time to cover today, endpoint attribute retrieval and incident enrichment. So before I go to the demos, I'll check with Adrian to see if there are any questions. No, uh, we're good to jump to the demos. Let's see why, what's going on. Yeah, let's, uh, let's take a look. Um, so we are going to go first to Catalyst Center. Uh, and uh, for example, we have a number of issues, as I mentioned before starting uh, the uh, session, the webinar, uh, I created some incidents. Uh, we can see here in the runtime dashboard, uh, for example, information regarding the incidents that have been uh, uh, basically that triggered um, issues, I'm sorry, that triggered incidents in ServiceNow. Uh, I can change here for the last week. And uh, for example, in the last week, I had 43 uh, different incidents uh, that have been created by Catalyst Center in ServiceNow. Uh, we can see a CMDB synchronization summary. Uh, it ran daily for the last week and it has been uh, basically successful. Um, every time I synchronized uh, 15 devices that have been sent from Catalyst Center to ServiceNow and they have been uh, accepted in the CMDB inventory table. And we can see here also information regarding the schedules. Um, this is the one to publish the inventory details. And this is the uh, endpoint attribute retrieval that I mentioned briefly uh, before. If we are looking uh, from a, a configuration perspective, all the configuration needs to be done through the manage and bundles. Uh, this is where uh, for example, uh, the bundle for the CMDB synchronization would be configured. I'm going to go very quickly through uh, this configuration. It's already configured, but I want to review the uh, configuration. In this case, I'm going to send uh, to the destination. This is my ServiceNow instance uh, that I'm using. I am using the Cisco DNA app. So I'm going to send to an endpoint that is published by the Cisco DNA app. I am sending all the attributes that are uh, available from uh, Catalyst Center to ServiceNow. And uh, this is the source identifier. This is how the devices will be identified in ServiceNow in the CMDB inventory table. Uh, if I'm looking in the ServiceNow and uh, go to the configuration item table, and I am going to group by discovery sources, uh, I will find out the discovery source that actually um, uh, publishes all the devices uh, from uh, Catalyst Center. This is the discovery source that I used in this case for synchronization. And I can identify all the devices that uh, basically are uh, synchronized from um, basically every night. You can see here information regarding devices. For example, uh, when was the last time that was uh, synchronized? Uh, most of them are from uh, last night, but there is one device that uh, probably is not managed anymore by uh, my Catalyst Center. And uh, that's why uh, this device uh, you can see here in the updated, it has been 19 uh, days ago. If I click on any of these devices, uh, and uh, for example, I'll uh, click on uh, LOCN, uh, we can see here it's a 24 port uh, switch, the serial number, uh, management IP address, software version. In the other attributes tab, we have the physical location of this device where my lab is, we can see information regarding the model number, the role of the device. According with Catalyst Center, this device has been um, configured as an access switch and the management IP address, um, basically the IP address of the uh, Catalyst Center that manages this device. If I will run this synchronization again, uh, for example, if I'm looking from a configuration, uh, uh, let's go to, 
integration workflows. Um, as I mentioned, the bundle configuration is the first step you need to schedule uh, to run the invent, uh, basically the workflow to publish all the inventory details from Catalyst Center service now in this case, uh, this uh, it runs uh, basically daily. I can run it now if I need to. And then I have the option to schedule for me, for example, it will run, uh, this is when I scheduled it last time, it will run every day at 9 p.m. So let's take a look back at uh, the runtime dashboard and uh, start to take a look at some of the incidents. Uh, incidents are um, creating automation, uh, the automating <clears throat> the workflow automation to create an incident when we have an issue in a Cisco DNA Center is very powerful. I'm going to uh, limit only to the last six hours. Uh, we can see here, for example, um, I have a change request that I created earlier today. Uh, for software upgrades, we are going to review this next, but we'll start with, uh, for example, incidents. I have a switch that has been uh, found unreachable by Catalyst Center, and that created an incident. Uh, I have interface connecting network devices is down, and we can see here, for example, uh, I have three incidents that have been created. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, we have information that is being provided from ServiceNow uh, to uh, Catalyst Center. In this case, for example, this incident is on hold. And uh, we have the history, uh, for example, this incident, uh, the communication, all the exchange messages between Catalyst Center and ServiceNow. We can see the source and destination. So Catalyst Center send the notification to ServiceNow to create an incident. Uh, from ServiceNow, we receive the update that the incident has been created. And then uh, we have the information, for example, in this case, from service now to Catalyst Center that the incident um, basically has been placed on hold. So if I'm the network engineer, very likely I would not pick up that incident. Uh, somebody is already working on that one. For example, we have one in progress. Uh, I can click here to uh, browse to one that is new. And uh, from this incident, we have the information, for example, um, it has been triggered as uh, high. Uh, urgency, I can change it to in progress. Um, I have the information here regarding, for example, a short description of what the problem is. Uh, the interface DIG103 has been uh, found basically disconnected from uh, the switch PDXM, which is my management switch. Uh, and uh, the port on that uh, basically um, is connected to 00. zero. Uh, we can see the configuration item that reported the issue. It's PDX-M. Uh, as I mentioned, when we install the uh, DNA app, uh, we are going to start to see this Cisco DNA tab uh, in, in the incidents. And here we can see the management IP address of basically of the cluster that um, manages basically the device uh, that um, trigger the uh, issue. Slash incident. We have more information regarding the device, software version, management IP address of the device. Um, in the topology, we have information about all the other devices that are connected to this device that may or may not be impacted by this issue. Uh, we have here the recommendation of how to troubleshoot uh, this issue. Uh, what are the re recommendations from an assurance perspective? Uh, how to troubleshoot uh, this problem? And we can see here the uh, something new that we released in the last few months. Uh, we are actually executing all of these suggested actions. So when the incident is created, we are going to execute all the recommendations that Assurance has for how to troubleshoot this issue. And we are going to collect the output of those uh, show commands from the devices that are impacted by this issue and log everything in ServiceNow. For example, in this case, we uh, the step one is check the errors and link information. So it's showing interface gig 103 on one of the devices. Uh, we are going to see, for example, here, um, the other end of this link that is down is gigabit Ethernet 00. And we see information, for example, of course, we know the pro link uh, protocol is down. Uh, we have all the information regarding the controllers. There's a lot of um, details that are very valuable, especially if I'm trying to troubleshoot an issue maybe hours later than when it occurred. 
So in this case, for example, maybe uh, I am going to uh, ch lower the severity because um, I think it's not that critical um, and I'm going to pick it up, I'm going to work, I'm going to update uh, the uh, incident. And if I go back to uh, Carly Center, refresh, we can see now that the incident shows in progress. Uh, clicking on the issue ID, we can see here also that uh, the event severity uh, will be lowered. Um, let's look at this. Um, so the um, severity on uh, basically um, on the incident is severity two now. So let's take a look back at the platform and bundle. So to configure this uh, workflow, we need to go to uh, basically network issue monitor and enrichment. Uh, this configuration is a, a little bit faster to uh, configure. All I need to do is decide which uh, service now access settings and where do I want to send these uh, incidents. Uh, once I do this, uh, basically uh, the bundle is configured. Uh, remember that for uh, the bundle configuration, it's only the first step. A step I mentioned that we need to decide which uh, events I want to actually subscribe. Uh, to send to ServiceNow. So in this case, I have uh, 175 uh, network issues that I will actually create incidents in ServiceNow. Uh, you can see here, for example, uh, a number of different um, um, issues uh, that I identify that um, basically I'm interested to actually create incidents in ServiceNow. So let's go to the last uh, very quickly for the last uh, uh, workflow, uh, which I mentioned is uh, the change request. So if I go back to the last six hours uh, earlier today, for example, I, soft, I ch schedule a change, a software upgrade for September 22nd. Uh, from here, we can see the ITSM status is new, uh, the change request that has been created. Uh, I can browse to ServiceNow. Uh, from here, I can learn more about of course, uh, it is a software upgrade. Um, I have the information regarding the device uh, that will be upgraded. In this case, is LO-CN. In the Cisco DNA tab, I have more information regarding the device, uh, the topology, all the other network devices that may be impacted when I'm rebooting this device, uh, if I do the software activation, and then the process. In this case, I am going to replace the uh, image that is 1791 with 1793 that is the golden image for that device at that location if i would be interested to uh, go through the process uh, i would have to approve this uh, and when approved that's the only time when uh, catalyst center will continue with the software um, distribution in my case i'm not interested to actually upgrade my device uh, to this um, software version uh, so i can basically reject it uh, but uh, only when approved, that's when uh, Catalyst Center will continue with the software upgrade. Any questions? No, we're all good. Okay, so well. very quickly, I know uh, from working with many of you, with many customers, not everybody has um, the option to install the Cisco DNA app in ServiceNow. There are uh, many of you that may not be allowed, ServiceNow has very strict uh, uh, policies in your environment, in your enterprise network, and you may not be able to install the Cisco DNA app. For those of us, of you, that you cannot use the Cisco DNA app, we do support workflows that will provide you all the information that we provide through the integration with the Cisco DNA app, but you have to do all the coding. You have at your end to actually uh, do all the data processing for all the information we are going to send to ServiceNow. So here are the options uh, that you have if you are not able to use the Cisco DNA app. Um, of course, you need to configure the platform and bundles and the schedules and the event notifications exactly the same as if you would use the app, except you are going to select through the configuration options that you are not planning to use the app, you are not able to use the app. We are going to send REST API calls to ServiceNow, but in this case, because we do not have the app, 
you are not going to send them to uh, our endpoints that we create on ServiceNow. You are going to send them to a staging and event table to generic REST API endpoints in ServiceNow. I'm going to share with you how to configure those. And uh, there is no closed loop in this case. We are sending you the information, but from a Cisco DNA Center, Catalyst Center platform, we do not have the ability to receive any communication back from ServiceNow. We don't know the incidents that you may create. We don't have the information as far as what you are doing, um, what your ServiceNow developers are doing with um, any of the data we send to ServiceNow. We don't know if that uh, inventory from uh, the inventory from Catalyst Sender will actually be updated to your CMDB inventory table or how many devices will be synchronized. So very quickly, um, I'm going to go through a couple of different workflows. Again, I'm skipping for a few steps, but I highly encourage uh, look uh, search for the Cisco Live presentations because I have all the details in those presentations. Uh, if you cannot find them, uh, please ping me or Adrian, and we are going to share them with you. Um, in ServiceNow, because we don't have the Cisco DNA app, I need to create first a table where I'm going to send the information from a Cisco DNA Center, from Catalyst Center, and a REST API endpoint, because Catalyst Center will send REST APIs calls to this ServiceNow REST API endpoint to publish data. And that data could be like, in this case, a staging table for the CMDB inventory, or it could be a, an event table because I want to send event notifications from Catalyst Center to ServiceNow. So it's a very straightforward process. You go to tables, system definition tables, and you create a new table. And then you have some information that you need to provide. Uh, for example, in my case, this is a staging table. It's a very genetic name. Um, and um, basically, I'm going to provide uh, some um, I'm going to configure this staging table. For example, I'm going to have an inventory details. Everything that Catalyst Center will send to ServiceNow for the CMDB inventory will be sent to this, um, basically in this table to this uh, parameter, which is inventory details. Uh, once I complete that step, I have the option, which is uh, fantastic. It's very good to actually verify which API endpoints I just created on ServiceNow, uh, what are the methods supported. You have the option, obviously, to enable, disable some of these methods, and you have the uh, possibility actually to test this REST API endpoint you just created on ServiceNow. So in my case, for example, once I create this um, uh, staging table, I can uh, test this API, I can send an API payload to the inventory details uh, parameter in ServiceNow in that new table. So the configuration management database thing looks slightly different, of course, because we will send information from Catalyst Center ServiceNow but we will not be able to actually receive anything back from the service now. So uh, we are starting with a different workflow. Uh, first, obviously creating the staging table, which we just did and the REST API endpoint. Uh, after that, we are going to configure the bundle to send to a staging table the information, the CMDB inventory. Uh, we are going to have to schedule the workflow and we are going to send the information to service now. Uh, MISO is not required because there is no communication back from ServiceNow to Catalyst Center. Uh, and you will have to do code development to handle this data, to process this information, the inventory from Catalyst Center. Here is, for example, uh, a, a couple of uh, CMDB inventory uh, jobs, uh, scheduled uh, workflows that I sent to a staging table. And we can see here in the inventory details uh, parameter, we have the information uh, regarding uh, all the devices managed by Catalyst Center. And uh, in a different format, you can see here uh, the JSON payload for one of the devices uh, that is managed by Catalyst Center. You can he see here software version, type of device, management IP address, uh, it is a serial number. Uh, you are going to see, obviously, information regarding the address. Everything that normally we would send to the Cisco DNA app would be available for you to receive in a staging table, process, and update your CMDB inventory while meeting your compliance and policy rules that you have uh, from ServiceNow. 
again, you need to process this data. We will not process. There is no app on ServiceNow. Um, we are just providing you the information, but the processing of this information will be uh, something that you need to uh, implement. Very quickly, for example, to create an event table, and again, I can create a change request table, but for example, in this case, I'm going to create an event table, a generic one, and a REST API endpoint. Uh, follow the same process. Uh, we go to uh, create a new table. In this case, it's an events REST APIs, and uh, we have the information to validate uh, the API endpoint, what methods are supported, and uh, for example, here is uh, from the ServiceNow REST API Explorer. If I want to test this API, I can uh, create basically uh, an, uh, an API call from ServiceNow to ServiceNow to send an event notification to the new table that I just created. From here also, we can see the API endpoint. Uh, this API endpoint is the one that you would have to configure in this case uh, in Catalyst Center. From a workflow perspective, again, the DNA app is not required. Uh, you will uh, first create a table and the REST API endpoint for events. Then uh, you are going to configure the bundle on Catalyst Center. You are going to basically uh, subscribe to the events that you are interested to receive uh, notification service now. And then we are going to send this information to you. You are going to see the information regarding the device, the topology, the suggested actions. Almost everything that we have collected about this incident will be sent uh, about this issue to ServiceNow. You need to process that information and create the actually the event or incident or problem in ServiceNow based on the workflows that you need to uh, basically configure on your end. So if we look here, for example, we can uh, uh, verify uh, that we are receiving events uh, in the new generic uh, event table that I just created. Uh, if I search for, let's say, events, we can see here that uh, in June, when I was uh, running these uh, workflows um, as generic instead of the CMDB table or the workflow to create incidents, uh, we have the event details and the event details provides me information regarding the severity, uh, the source, basically the IP address, of the cluster that reported the issue. Uh, there is information regarding the device that has been uh, considered unreachable. Uh, almost everything, as I mentioned, that we typically send uh, to our DNA app would be uh, provided here. Uh, I know I found in the past that uh, actually having these payloads, the both the CMDB inventory or payloads for event details, uh, might be very useful for some of you if you are uh, looking to implement this integration without using the Cisco DNA app. And if that's the case, please reach out to me and I'll publish those. Uh, I'll uh, share with you the event payloads or the CMDB inventory payloads because that would help you uh, from a software development on service now. Uh, here is a little bit more detail about uh, JSON formatted, a little bit better format to read this information. We can see, for example, uh, the device is unreachable. Um, basically, uh, information uh, regarding the uh, men, uh, the IP address of the DNA Center cluster that reported the issue. Um, this is just a brief um, overview of what is included. So, Gabby, there's a comment here from Ron. Ron, thanks so much for joining. I'm happy to see that you are able to, to join the webinar. So, right, there's, there's kind of a big difference between having the DNA app in service now and not having it. There's quite a bit of heavy lifting that's required when you don't use the app. But that's, like you said, it's for environments when uh, where you're not able to install the app. The, the preferred way would be definitely, if you have the option in service now, install. The Cisco DNA app, that's going to make your life much easier. But if you cannot, then as a fallback, you have to do it manually. Yeah, and and all the the app files, everything that we are doing, all the scripting, that, and we are going to talk a little bit more next session, uh, all the scripting for custom workflows is actually available. Um, you can read the apps, uh, the scripts. If you, are, if you are interested to change any of them, you can do it. Um, I have seen in the past also customers where they 
cannot fully use the app, but they like the workflows and the integrations and the capabilities that are imported, uh, that are available. So what they are starting is they are starting with the app, but they are changing. They, they write their own business rules and you are going to see what the business rule is in ServiceNow that will change the behavior of uh, what updates we can create on uh, ServiceNow. So there is also a sort of a hybrid mode that is possible. You really need to work with the ServiceNow admins to uh, basically see what can you do, uh, what would they allow if you want to use the app, and what uh, can be done to change if not everything that we do through the app is acceptable uh, according with their policies. But uh, definitely get engaged with us and we can walk through what are the options if you need to make some changes uh, to your environment. Any other questions? That was it. So let's take a look at custom workflows. And custom workflows is if you use the app or you don't use the app, you do have the option to run automation workflows that are triggered from ServiceNow. Those automation workflows will call Catalyst Center uh, APIs. So I know um, I've worked with customers that are interested here. Hey, I want to onboard devices to start a process to add a device to the inventory in uh, ServiceNow, and that should trigger a workflow that will onboard the device in Catalyst Center. Maybe I want to run an automation workflow the other way around. I want to create a change request in ServiceNow that will do a software upgrade of the device in, uh, in uh, Catalyst Center. So uh, a lot of different workflows uh, can be implemented on ServiceNow. All of them would call Catalyst Center APIs. And for that to happen, obviously, you need the main server. Um, you would be able to take advantage if you are using the Cisco DNA app of some information that is already available in ServiceNow that makes your life easier. But let's take a quick look. We have only a few minutes left for some options for custom workflows. And um, this is just a, a concept. It's a proof of concept. It's an open source uh, network troubleshooting uh, uh, basically, application uh, that um, I developed um, uh, for uh, ServiceNow to demonstrate how powerful these uh, custom workflows could be for all of us, um, both ServiceNow and uh, network, uh, uh, ServiceNow admins, engineers, and the network teams as well. So, again, from uh, a workflow perspective, I'm going to create a new app and business rule. I'm going to uh, create the bundle uh, to create the incidents in. Uh, service now. Uh, once an assurance issue is triggered, uh, I'm going to create send an event notification to service now. Uh, this will create an incident, and the natural troubleshooting app allows me to call uh, Cisco DNA Center, Catalyst Center APIs to troubleshoot the network from service now directly. It allows me to send comments to devices from ServiceNow, from the incident, you are going to see in the demo, and those commands will be executed, and uh, the information is uh, retrieved uh, from uh, the Catalyst Center, it is logged in ServiceNow. Um, you already have seen this, um, uh, this is with the app, the same workflow can be implemented without the app, but I don't have, basically I'm using the app because I'm using information that is already configured on ServiceNow, from uh, the, the app itself. A similar concept, again, could be uh, implemented without the Cisco DNA app. In this case, Network Troubleshooting app is an application that I create on ServiceNow that runs a, 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 basically a script that will collect this information from ServiceNow, no, from DNA Center, sorry. So very quickly, I'm going to go through this very, very fast. Unfortunately, I'm running out of time. Uh, but you will get the concept of, okay, I need to create an app and um, the Cisco Live presentation includes all the steps of how to create an app, how to develop the workflow. Uh, so first you need to create a new app that is the recommendation from ServiceNow. Uh, then uh, you, in this case, I'm going to name it custom workflow. And then you need to create a business rule that will run the script. So the app is sort of the your environment where this business rule will execute. So in this case, for example, you can see here, I have the Cisco DNA custom workflow. That's the app that I created 
that's the environment where this business rule will execute. And this business rule is basically the server side is the service now platform that will be triggered based on specific conditions. Uh, in this case, I want to send a command uh, to a specific device uh, from an incident in ServiceNow. And in this case, um, I'm going to basically use the incident table and only when I have updates in the incident table, a new comment that has been added and that comment matches my format, my desired um, format, that's when this business rule will execute, uh, which means the JavaScript application will uh, the workflow will uh, run and will collect information from uh, Catalyst Center. So I'm going to skip through this, but um, let me show you what this does. So um, this network troubleshooting app, again, I mentioned briefly, it is a JavaScript application running on ServiceNow that will call Catalyst Center APIs to run specific um, uh, tasks. In this case, I'm going to send command runner APIs to devices and collect that information. And that information will be logged in the incident. But the same could be, I need to, let's say I mentioned earlier, I need to run a business rule that will add a device to the inventory calling Carly Center REST APIs from maybe a change request. So I'm going to create a change request uh, that will trigger a new business rule. The execution will identify, is it a change request to add a device to the inventory? And if yes, we'll call Carly Center APIs to add the device to the inventory. So same concepts could be used for uh, many different automation workflows uh, that you may be interested to develop on ServiceNow. I'm not very good with JavaScript. Uh, in order to build this uh, JavaScript, basically the application. I have some help from my son. He's a master uh, in, um, uh, he studies computer science. He's a master's degree student at Purdue University. For him, it was quite a bit easier. It was a very interesting collaboration with him. He's obviously very good with software. I'm a lot better with APIs and Python, but uh, we managed to build this application. It wasn't very uh, time consuming. So I highly encourage for uh, any of these applications, partner with developers, they are great to really translate our desire from a network automation perspective to uh, a code that can be executed. Again, this is a proof of concept code, but something that can be developed in production. So this is the workflow. In this case, I'm going to select the last additional comment. Uh, in this, uh, this is the format that I'm expecting device that is the device that I want to send the commands, uh, the CLI commands to, and the command that I'm going to send to the device. Then I'm going to go through the entire workflow to identify the managed uh, device, the, the, uh, the IP address, basically the cluster of the DNA center cluster that manages the device. I am going to actually identify the device unique identifier. I'm going to send uh, the CLI command through the command runner APIs. Uh, and I'm going to update the incident with this information. So in this case, if I see the command send, it's sort of an echo reply from an application perspective. I know we found the device, the device exists. I, we know the DNA center cluster that manages the device and we send the commands to the device. And you can see here the command output. Um, this is what I am receiving back from the device. Uh, this is what uh, Cali Center received from Command Runner APIs. And so, these are just show commands. Yeah, just show commands. We can configure devices if we want, but um, I have not seen too many of us that are very comfortable. I am comfortable to do <laughs> uh, basically configuration of devices from ServiceNow, but maybe I'm a little bit too casual or maybe my life <laughs> doesn't matter too much. But uh, certainly, uh, about anything that you have an API, we have an API in Carly Center can be automated. So for example, if we look at one of these incidents, uh, we can see here uh, in the notes, um, for example, I sent some comments earlier. I'm going to send a number of comments shortly. Uh, for example, I wanted to see the show IP interface for this device. This is the device that is impacted, the echo reply, 
and then the information about the uh, basically the interfaces um, we can see show logging uh, for example if i'm interested i can send the again it's a la it's a proof of concept so show logging And let's say I want to do show run. I'm updating the incident. <clears throat> I was, this is the device that has been impacted by this mm -hmm. issue. Uh, I'm sending the command show run. I received the echo reply that uh, we found the device and it's uh, basically managed by a Carly center. Uh, and if the device is reachable, then we have the output of that uh, command. In this case, show run, we can see uh, any information that might help me from a troubleshooting perspective. Uh, we can sh look at, uh, of course, this is a very simple incident like interface down, but um, if we have routing issues, I can look at uh, the routing table, uh, CDP neighbors, uh, routing adjacencies. Uh, we can look at, um, we have today about 50, I think, different show commands that are supported through the command runner APIs. And uh, suddenly uh, we can collect all of this information um, from devices. The advantage of using it through uh, the incident is that uh, anybody, if Adrian logs in in this incident, he can see exactly how I troubleshooted the issue, what information I collected. Uh, he, he doesn't need to uh, recreate this problem to uh, identify basically, the, uh, he doesn't need to repeat the steps. Everything is here. I don't need to SSH to the device. I don't need to VPN to the device, uh, to the network. Um, I don't need to copy and paste to a notepad or a text file and then add to the incident. Everything is logged in in the incident. Perfect. And uh, we're a bit over time. So thank you so much, Gabby. Did we have anything else for the folks? I think um, we I have two extra slides for like mm -hmm. resources. Um, definitely download the presentation if you need. We, I think um, we already shared the resources where you can find more information. Mm -hmm. uh, so definitely, I encourage you to look through. Uh, there are only two or three slides with um, useful information for you. Perfect. So thank you so much, Gabi. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Um, main thing to remember, right, APIs. We've showed you the service now integration because we have APIs and we're exposing all this information from pretty much all Cisco products, you can integrate them with other products, third-party products like a Netbox, like a PagerDuty, right? We didn't even touch those. But keep in mind that also it works with, um, with all these other third-party products and that's the beauty of the API. Um, any final thoughts, Gabby, before we wrap up? No, I, I think this is a very easy integration to configure. It's very easy to get started, but it's extremely powerful from a business perspective. We can save time. Um, we don't need to create incidents by hand or change requests. Um, the inventory is very valuable from an uh, asset management perspective in ServiceNow, and especially as Adrian mentioned, the same workflows can be implemented with Jira Service Desk or any other ITSM platforms. And you can innovate, and we should all innovate on top of we already have built in for you. Perfect. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, we'll have this recording on YouTube on the DevNet channel for your viewing after this. It's also going to be on Bright Talk. If you have any questions, drop them in there. Uh, Gabby and myself will monitor and we'll answer your questions. Ron. Again, a question, a comment over there. Uh, interactivity is slick for troubleshooting. Very cool. Yes, we also like it. Thanks for the comment. Thanks everyone for joining and see you on the next one. Take care. Thank you for your time.